How many screws do you have in your body? Yeah, it's 40, I have 47 screws. And how many staples to fix your lung? I don't know, how, I didn't count them. I've seen them on the x-ray. <laughs> and it's a long, it's like 15 centimeter. Today I'm meeting with triathlete Göran Hilmersson, who in 2011 was in a terrible bike accident. He broke several of the bones in his body and he was hospitalized for more than three weeks. Let's, uh, let's do some swimming. Yeah, yeah I, ha I have a lot of um, metal pieces, uh, 13 plates and uh, 47 screws. And uh, if we start from the top, I have uh, one piece here, yeah. you can feel the screws. It's a memory from the accident, two pieces of, of metal here. Joran had several major fractures, many in the face, but thanks to incredible doctors who patched them up using titanium biomaterials, Joran was able to get back and finish a full Ironman only a year after his crash. My arm here, which I probably hit the left mirror of the car. I mean, <laughs> look at him now. You can't even tell that he was ever injured. And I think this is probably the coolest type of materials that I can think of. Materials that are inserted into a body to help restore body functions. Jonas' amazing recovery probably wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the tools and materials used to help his body to heal. What makes these biomaterials so special is the fact that they are accepted by the body. This acceptance between the material and the body is crucial to avoid complications. And this is especially important with the advanced biomaterials scientists are developing now. Materials that are made to become permanently integrated with body tissues. Here at the Department of Biomaterials, scientists behind me are working to find solutions for situations like this. Cameraman. When you place a material inside the body, then their uh, proteins will uh, adsorb to the surface. And then there will be cells from the bloodstream that will come to the surface. And after that, inflammatory cells. And they will sense if this material is toxic or if, if it could work in the tissue. And this is uh, biocompatibility, that the material and the biological system works together. This biocompatibility is much dependent on the surface chemistry of the material, and a lot of research is done to understand this better. So in this little glass beaker here, we have little disks of titanium uh, and a solution containing bacteria. And what they want to do here is to see uh, how bacteria settles on different coatings of the titanium. Altering the surface chemistry by applying different coatings to the titanium, they aim to minimize the risk of infections. And when looking at the type of implants they are developing here, it's not hard to understand why this is important. These advanced implants are made to become integrated with the bone tissue. The process, called osseointegration, involves bone cells growing in and around scaffolding-like implants and becoming a permanent part of the skeleton. The implants are made patient-specific through 3D computer models and 3D scanners. As this is designed directly from a, a computer uh, drawing, means that we can actually use the diagnostic tools at the hospital, scan the patient, define the defect, create the computer drawing and then print the implant that directly fits the patient. It's actually possible to see these uh, 3D models in, in, in 3D using these old school green and red 3D goggles. And get this, 3D printing is now being used to take biomaterials even one step further, actually printing body parts and hopefully later even whole organs. We're gonna print an ear. Yep, that's right, we are printing an ear. But similar to the bone implants, the idea is to build kind of like a scaffolding for cells to grow. And because we can both 3D scan and print, organs can also be made very patient specific. Basically, you can make your left ear look identical to your right. And this whole technology is definitely going to revolutionize tissue engineering in the future. Just imagine, not only will we have biomaterials to help restore skeletal functions, but also to repair damaged soft tissue organs. We can easily see how this field of material science is making a huge difference to the quality of life of a lot of people. And it's also bringing scientists from different fields and universities together, as it is a link between biology and engineering. If you like this video, please also check out the other videos that we've done on material science together with Chalmers University of Technology. Alright, thanks for watching.